Hello everyone, my name is Kirill, you are on the Audio Advisor channel. Today we will talk about the types of gearboxes. What types of boxes do you know? Mechanical, automatic, but what about the robotic or the variator? All transmissions can be conditionally divided into two categories, mechanical and automatic. Obviously, in a manual transmission, we manually shift the gears. So the first category includes the well-known mechanics, aka a stick, with which we switch gears by hand. In this category, everything is clear, only one type and that's it. But in the category of automatic transmissions, there are three types, a classic automatic, a robotic and a CVT. Advantages of a manual transmission First, it is simple and cheap. It is economical. It allows you to drive in neutral and optimally select the speed limit. The manual transmission has a wide range of operational capabilities. It can be started from a pusher, you can tow any car with it, you can switch to a lower gear, brake with the engine and so on. And the most important advantage is its service life. It will outlive the engine, outlast the body and your car as a whole. But the main disadvantage of this box is that you constantly need to change gears, you constantly need to pull the stick, you will quickly get tired of it. The second disadvantage is that the acceleration speed depends on your ability to change gears quickly and on time. This gearbox requires higher skills and qualifications of drivers. For example, in the USA there are two types of driver's license, one for manual transmissions and another type for automatic transmissions. So if a cop stops you, looks at your license, then he needs to look inside at what kind of gearbox you have. By the way, this will also be introduced in Belarus soon and it will be available to get this type of driver license, but you will have to drive only with an automatic. So the conclusion. A manual gearbox is almost ideal for a car enthusiast, but it has one huge disadvantage. It's not very convenient, especially in the cities, because you need to constantly change gears yourself. Well, what can I say? An automatic transmission is synonymous with the word comfort. It is very convenient to drive. The automatic transmission protects the engine and transmission from overload. The automatic transmission has increased power and allows you to curb very powerful engines. Many sports cars have an automatic transmission. So that you understand, in a 500 horsepower car with a manual transmission, you can fly away even in the first gear. The main disadvantages of the automatic transmission are its operational capabilities. It cannot be started from a pusher, it cannot be towed, it cannot be drifted, it cannot be overheated. The second main disadvantage is that the consumption in this type is 15% more than in mechanics. The third disadvantage, with an increase in mileage, operating costs will increase sharply, because repair of automatic transmission is very expensive. So the conclusions. The automatic transmission is a real work of art, but there is one big problem. It has an increased gas consumption. If you are interested in the design of a robotic gearbox, we have a video about this on the channel. The link will be here somewhere. In general, there are a lot of types of robotic gearboxes. Each manufacturer, be it Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen, calls its gearboxes by its name and says that it is unique. But specifically, Volkswagen divides robotic gearboxes into two types, with dry and wet clutch. The main advantage of the robotic gearbox is the fast shift time. That is, the next gear is practically engaged in advance. From this, it also follows that it is very economical. Of all automatic transmissions, it ranks first in terms of efficiency. There are also disadvantages. So now, this type is still developing. It is constantly being adjusted. Some changes are constantly made. The lifespan is relatively small. By the way, Volkswagen again had a scandal with robotic gearboxes with a dry clutch. It did not even make it to 50,000 kilometers. The last disadvantage is that it is very expensive to repair and there are very few specialists who can do it. Nevertheless, 
Manufacturers rely on a robotic gearbox, so in the future most likely we'll see more of it. The variator does not actually contain any specific number of gears. It has, as it were, an infinite number of gears, and at each moment of time, the variator selects the gear ratio you need. Since the variator constantly selects the optimal mode, it is very economical and has great dynamics of acceleration. But like any gearbox, it also has its drawbacks. The variator is applicable only for low power engines. There are no gears in the CVT and all energy and power is transmitted using friction forces and large loads cannot be transferred using friction forces. The variator has a limited life expectancy and is highly dependent on operating conditions. Some even do not live up to 50,000. So if you constantly accelerate, then this friction mechanism will simply wear out. In general, this is an excellent option for small power cars. But like all automatic transmissions, it is very expensive to maintain and repair. As we can see, each type of gearbox has its pros and cons. Each car owner selects the gearbox depending on their preferences. I hope that this information was useful to you and will help you when choosing a car. This was the Auto Advisor channel. Write in the comments which box you prefer. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And all the best to you. See you soon.